welcome to worship at Multnomah Presbyterian Church as we continue to worship apart but together online. If you're new to us, I'm Heather Hellman. I'm the Youth and Children's Director here and I'm happy you could join us. We are really missing connecting in person, but we are so glad to be able to connect both over all our different Zoom gatherings that we've had, like our service last week and our committee meetings and some small groups and our youth groups um, and also in online worship. And we want to thank everyone for continuing to support our church and its missions and ministries. What an awesome gift that is and our various committees and staff members are working so hard to make sure that um, we continue to care for each other, care for our community, and we continue to grow together in faith during this time. And our staff is working uh, with our different committees and our elders on plans for this fall so that we can return to some of the normal rhythms that we would in the fall of growing in God's word together and meeting together more often. Uh, so we're looking at ways that we can, can, we can do that again, um, apart but together online. And we're looking at some ways to help us all dig into God's word more together, but in ways that hopefully will not feel like another burden in this time when we're all carrying the weight of so much, right? But we'll... Um, be a delight maybe and another opportunity to connect with each other uh, and won't require a heavy commitment so we want you to know that we're working on those things and we're working on more ways to support you as we continue to have to do things at a distance but we can thank you again for your continued support for your continued engagement in the things that we're doing and for your continued gifts um, again there's links in the descriptions of the service online to where you can give, but we are just so grateful um, that you continue in that way. And we're grateful to our committee members that volunteer their time and all the people um, that work are working hard to take care of our facilities and take care of, of each other right now, right? Our deacons and other elders that are connecting with members of the congregation and our missions team that's working to make sure that we're helping uh, our community and, and impact areas that need it most right now. So thank you, MPC, and thank you visitors. And if you're a first time visitor, there is an online connect card that you can fill out in the description. Uh, and we're happy to make a donation to a local food bank in your honor when you do that to Neighborhood House. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. And now let's turn to the one who gathers us together, no matter where we are, right? To the one who's always with us to our God. And let's look at Psalm 30, a psalm of celebration. And we've looked at this before during the pandemic, but it's, it's good to go back to these words, these words of David after he's come through a time of loss and he's coming out on the other side. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. When I was prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. Then you turned away from me, and I was shattered. I cried out to you, O Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy, saying, What will you gain if I die? If I sink into the grave, can my dust praise you? Can it tell you of your faithfulness? Hear me, Lord, and have mercy on me. Help me, O Lord. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Let's draw on those joyful moments that we may have grabbed here or there in the midst of all this crazy. And let's let God turn our mourning into dancing and into joy this morning as we go to him with worship and praise.
kids we are continuing looking through the book of mark remember one of those gospel books one of those books of the bible that tells us the story of jesus and in this story something really really crazy happens i'm gonna let the helm and pets tell us the story today jesus took peter james and john up a high mountain to be alone as the men watched jesus started to look very different he transformed and his clothes became really, really white, whiter than any washing machine could make them. The disciples were really surprised, but that's not all that happened. The Then two people, two big heroes of God's story, two people who were already in heaven, Moses and Elijah, appeared with Jesus. Peter was kind of scared, but also thought it was really cool and wanted to stay and build some things to honor Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. Then something else happened. A big cloud came over them and God spoke. This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. The cloud left and when Peter, James, and John looked around, they saw that Elijah and Moses were gone and only Jesus was with them. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until after he had risen from the dead on Easter. Whoa! Can you believe all that stuff the disciples saw when Jesus took them to the top of the mountain? Jesus got glowy and transformed in front of their eyes. We call it the transfiguration. And then, as if that wasn't enough, two really important people in the story of our faith 
Moses and Elijah show up. And those people were supposed to be dead or taken up into heaven long before the disciples were even around. So what must they have thought when they saw these big heroes of God's story right there with Jesus? And then even more happened, right? God appeared in a cloud and with this voice telling them about Jesus and telling them that he loved them. What? That was crazy. But you know, before Jesus led them up the mountain, he had given the disciples some bad news. They had just seen him do all these incredible things, healing people, bringing people back from the dead, casting out demons, all those things we've been talking about the last few weeks. And then he said that he was going to suffer and die and come back, but he was going to suffer and die and that they would suffer because of their faith in him too. And that had to have been pretty scary. But then they went up to the mountain and they saw all this amazing stuff that showed them that Jesus wasn't just a teacher that could do really cool things like heal people, but he was actually the Messiah. He was actually God's son and really God with us, right? God in human form. That must have blown their minds out of the water, right? Off the mountain. But God did that because he wanted them to know that when they got off that mountaintop and they were back down the hill and life got tough, that Jesus was with them and that Jesus' promises of new life and his love being with them always were real. And you know, we've seen that promise lately, haven't we? We've gone through some sad things, some scary things, some unknown things, and Jesus has been with us. And in the midst of being fearful or being sad about the things that we're missing out on and the people that we're missing and fearful of the unknown, Jesus has shown us joy, hasn't he? We've had joy with our families. We've had joy in learning new things. We've had joy in even being able to celebrate, maybe just a little differently than we normally celebrate special occasions like birthdays and things. And you know, this week I asked your parents to send me some pictures of the things that have brought you guys joy. Maybe new things you've tried, celebrations you've had, new parks you've gone to, things you've been able to do while we've been socially distancing that have brought comfort and joy to you. And so thank you for sharing those with us so that they can bring comfort and joy to all of us right now and be reminders of God's goodness during this uncertain time. Well, NPC, we are certainly grateful to see all those young faces, aren't we? It's been so hard for us to be apart. We have such an awesome multi-generational congregation and it's one of the things that makes our church so beautiful and being apart has made that a little harder to keep those connections. But we're so grateful to our kids and our families for sending us pictures throughout some of these worship services and helping us stay connected to each other. And really, if you guys want to send in some pictures, too, of your adventures as adults, we would love to share those, too. And we thank you for the ways that you sent the videos and pictures you've sent in um, earlier on in the pandemic. It's just such a joy to see you. And it was a joy to see you guys all on Zoom last week, too, all of you that could be there. But now let's, let's turn to God, both with the things that we're grateful for, those moments of joy, those moments of help, those moments of comfort that he's brought us and also 
those feelings of fear and anxiety that are still with us, those feelings of heartbreak and mourning, let's take it all to him now in prayer. Jesus, we are so grateful to you for all that you've done, but most importantly for not leaving us alone right now. We are thankful that you are walking through the valley with us and that you are trying to show us your love and your grace in lots of ways. So we thank you for the ways that we've been able to celebrate with our families today, seeing those great images of them having fun and trying new things and celebrating milestones and God just finding ways to enjoy the world that you've given us and the people that you've given us. God, we thank you for all the glimpses we get of your goodness. But sometimes we're blinded to that by our anxiety and our fears, and we thank you that you are so patient with us, so tender and so loving. So help take the blinders off those of us that are not feeling so joyful today. Help us to see your goodness. And God, we pray for the people of Beirut. Oh, man, it's got to be hard to see your goodness right now. When everything has just been thrown into chaos by that explosion. In a place where they were already hurting. To have so much more hurt come. God, help them to see the helpers. Help them to cling to what is good around them right now. Help them to cling to you. And give them the hope they need to rebuild. God, help us to rebuild whatever it is that has been thrown into chaos in our lives right now. Certainly not near what the people of Beirut are going through, but we have our own scars. We have our own many explosions in our lives, whether that's the loss of a job or a loved one, the loss of routine, the loss of a sense that we're secure. God, help us to see that you are our rock in the midst of it all. And Jesus, help us to be beacons of your love and your light, of your joy. Help us to turn mourning into laughing for those around us. Make us instruments not only of your peace in the world around us, but make us instruments of laughter and fun as well. God, show us the ways that we can bring joy to others at this time. Show us the ways that we can bring healing. Help us to be good listeners in this time when things seem so crazy and divided. Help us to be good learners. And help us to be peacemakers as well. We thank you, Jesus, for making peace possible for making love possible, and for being the best example of it. Amen.
Mark 9, 2-9 After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could have reached them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Well, I want to thank Spencer Magnuson for sharing the scripture with us this morning. You know, Spencer is one of our volunteer youth leaders, and he has been for quite a while since he got back from college uh, years and years ago, and he is just awesome. He is so dedicated, and during this pandemic, he has been at every Zoom youth group meeting since the very beginning. And in fact, when I was tired and wanted to take a week off, he said, no, come on, we can do this. And he's the game master. He's the one that makes youth groups so much fun for everyone. And he's continued that fun even on Zoom meetings. So that is a true gift. And I'm just so thankful that I have Spencer in my life, but that our youth have Spencer in theirs. He is such a gift, and it's people like Spencer um, that are bringing me joy and comfort during this time. And you know that scripture that he just read and that the Hellman Pat showed us earlier is such a crazy story, isn't it? It's just such a mind-blowing, weird experience for the disciples. But when we do back up and and see what was happening in that chapter just before, and by the way, this story is pretty much the same in Luke, and it's also in chapter 9 of Luke, and we see the same set of circumstances. Each tells the story just a tiny bit differently, um, just small, tiny details. But before the disciples went up for that mountaintop experience, they were confronted with things not unlike what we're going through now. They were confronted with the realization that this amazing healer, this amazing teacher, was going to suffer and die. This person that they had given their lives over to was going to leave them, even if it was brief. And he told them that they would suffer as well, and that following him wasn't going to be easy. And so, as they climbed up that mountain with Jesus, It's not hard to understand the confusion they must have been feeling, the fear they must have been feeling, the frustration, the anger, maybe. They had given their lives to this man. They had their future wrapped up in him, and they thought things were going great. And now he was letting them know in big ways that it wasn't. Man, really reminds me of all this right now that we're going through with this pandemic, with all the unrest and the division in our country, with the, what we're getting confronted with and, and how horrible and awful the experience of some people in our own country have when it comes to racism. It makes you frustrated, doesn't it? We've lost our sense of security. We've lost our comfort of feeling like we were prepared for the future. It's frustrating. And it's angry. And it's okay to be frustrated and angry, isn't it? It's okay to cry out to God like David did in that psalm we read earlier and say, Where are you? But the awesome part about the gift that God has given us in the church, in each other, is that we get to be reminded when we come together and worship, when we come together in small groups over Zoom or youth groups or committee meetings and things over Zoom. We get to be reminded of God's goodness, don't we? As we hear each other's stories, 
as we celebrate the things that God is doing in our lives, despite all the ugliness around us. And Tim Bernasek, one of our former elders, or actually still an elder, he's just not actively serving on session right now, but he is on our Christian Ed Committee. He's one of our adult Sunday school teachers. Tim was willing to share a story with us on video this week of the ways that God is bringing him through this pandemic and the ways that he has seen Jesus in his life during this time. So let's see Tim's story right now. Good morning, church. I'm Tim Bernasek, and I've seen Christ over the last three months, most often through the body of the church. I can't help but reflect on the early church and how due to persecution they had to meet in secret to fellowship and, and worship God. But yet over the 2,000 years, the church has survived and thrived. Here we are now in the face of this terrible virus in a situation where we cannot gather together. But through the wonders of technology, uh, we meet once a week uh, in a manner that is spread very publicly to the very ends of the earth. I've really enjoyed and relished the fact that uh, just about a thousand miles away outside of a little town, Craig, Montana, my mother has joined up with us uh, almost every Sunday. and. Again, it's just been wonderful to be able to worship uh, with her every week in, in this way. When things started to unfold in, in early March, I felt the need to get together with just meet in person with some members of the church. And while those attempts to meet in person were short-lived due to the shutdown, we quickly shifted to Zoom and have continued to meet uh, very regularly since. And I know Poppy, my wife Poppy and I have really enjoyed and benefited and seen those gatherings and time together as a blessing. And one of the few activities that wasn't uh, shut down from the very early days was golfing. And so uh, Dan Williams, Paul Barnum, and Chris Olm and I uh, throughout the spring uh, days, once a week we'd get out and, and play golf. And guys, those times together were just an incredible blessing and really helped me get by and was something that I really look forward to uh, every every week, just that connection with all of you. I really do miss seeing all of you and gathering in our church for worship. I miss the handshakes and the hugs and look forward to someday, in whatever way possible, getting back to being in the sanctuary together and praising God through through song and through studying scripture and seeing all those wonderful kids uh, scurrying around the church. This certainly isn't the script that I would have written for 2020, but you know, I, I really believe that's the point. Whether through persecution or through the pandemic, Christ and his church have survived and thrived, always have, and always will. And I believe that's a reality that we can base our faith and our hope in today and forever. Praise be to God. Well, thank you so much, Tim, for sharing that. We really appreciate getting to hear those things, getting to celebrate with you, getting to understand your joy. And that is encouraging for all of us, isn't it? And if any of you have stories that you want to share, we would absolutely love to hear those. Um, you just have to send me a video clip and I'll edit it in or if you didn't feel comfortable videoing yourself maybe we could set up an appointment to social distance at the church and record you and, and include it in our worship service because aren't these stories encouraging isn't it good to hear how God is working in the lives of everyone around us you know that's what God was doing up on that mountain when Jesus took his disciples up there he didn't take them up to just blow their minds. <laughs> he took them up there so that they could see that he was more than just a cool teacher. That he was more than just a guy to hang out with and follow and have some purpose in their life. That he was God. That he was with them. And that he was going to carry them through whatever they were about to experience. It was confirmation for them that there was something more than just the dark picture Jesus had just painted for them before they went up that mountain. 
It was helping them see that there was more to life than that grim future. It was helping them see that they were with God and God was with them and he was going to transform them. You know, Jesus transformed on that mountain in front of them. And then those two heroes of the faith showed up and that was all confirmation for them. Confirmation that he was the Messiah, that he was the one the prophets had foretold because there was the original prophet Elijah laying it all out for them. That confirmation at that moment was exactly what they needed. And you know, they were afraid, right? When all this was going down and Peter didn't want to leave. Like he wanted to stay there and build memorials to the three of them, to Elijah and Moses and Jesus. And some of that was just fear and not knowing what to do. And Peter was known for just kind of reacting to things and not really thinking. But some of that was also not wanting to go down that mountain, right? And face what was coming next. It's kind of like at the end of a vacation. There's parts of us that just want to get home, right? But there's parts of us that just don't want to get back to the regular rhythms of life. And Peter was in that moment in an extreme way. And after they got that confirmation that God was with them, that this was the Messiah, that God loved them, and that he was going to bring them through, they had to start going down the mountain and back to their lives and back to what Jesus was telling them was going to come next. And Jesus told them not to say anything, too. Can you imagine? My daughter calls that Jesus pranking his friends when he does these things. But really, in this case, Jesus was trying to stop a narrative about the Messiah. There was a narrative out there that the Messiah was going to come as this avenging power, this war-like God that was going to get everyone out of slavery and overturn everything, but with might and force. And that's not who Jesus was. He was overturning everything. He was changing everything around. He was putting love first, right? And that was radical. It's still radical, isn't it? But he wasn't doing that in an avenging force way, was he? And if they came down that mountain and said that he had transformed and glowed and that Moses and Elijah had showed up, the people that heard that would just think of that avenging, forceful God. Jesus wanted them to see him suffer and die first before they shared that story so that they would know that he was powerful, but he was humble. And that real power came in giving of yourself for others. And that it was that, that sacrificial love, that mercy and that grace that were the real power and the real thing that were going to set people free, that were going to set all of us free. And so that's why he told them not to say anything. Everyone had to see him suffer and die first. They had to see him humble himself and give his life so that they could understand the real power that he was coming with. And we are so grateful for that power, aren't we? We are so grateful even that he suffered because he knows us and he knows this pain that we're going through and he knows this uncertainty. And he didn't just send the disciples down the mountain alone. He went with them and he walked with them in the valley and he walked with them in the hard things of life. And he sent the Holy Spirit, right? So that we are never, ever alone. And he does promise to turn our mourning into laughing and dancing. And he does delight in us when we delight. And he has provided us, hasn't he? With signs of that all around. Signs of his love. Signs of his hope. Signs that we will get through this. We, uh, we had some bad news last week. We had been looking forward to our daughter going off to college this fall as a college freshman. And every family looks forward to that, I know. But in our family, it was a little, a little different. Maybe a little more special in that our daughter has an illness that she gives me permission to speak about um, that causes her to be disabled, that causes her to miss out on a lot 
that has caused her, even before the pandemic, to spend a lot of time in her room, unable to go out, to spend time with friends, unable to go to school a lot of days. And despite that, she worked really hard uh, to earn some scholarships to help pay for school, to get herself in a healthier, stronger place by working out, by working hard researching her own condition and taking the information she learned to doctors to try and find new ways to help her be strong by training her service dog Edison so that she could be more mobile um, and less afraid to be out and about. And so she'd been working so hard and we were looking forward to her being in the dorm where she could have more of a social life than she can have in our house. And even on her down day, she'd be surrounded by her peers and no one would be driving because she can't drive, but um, they would all be living on campus together as freshmen. And so we were just so excited for that. And she had got accepted into this small research program uh, in marine research that was her dream come true. And so even during the pandemic, we were holding out hope that she would be able to start at the dorms at Western Washington University this fall. And then we got the news last week that they were taking most of their classes online and that unless it was a returning student that didn't have anywhere else to live they really didn't want people on campus and so that was just devastating right i mean it was devastating obviously more so for our daughter but crushing as a parent too and it was just one more blow in the midst of all this really and the next day i thought we had been talking about going to the ocean and i was really tired but i thought no we need to go to the beach we need some beach therapy because we love the water, we love the ocean. And so she and I went and we found this beach that we would never have looked for before, but we were trying to find a beach without a lot of people because we're trying to be very careful and socially distance. And with her health and the other people in our bubble's health, we need to be very cautious. And so we are trying to look for any place, right, that doesn't have big crowds. So we went way out there in Tillamook and found this beach that you had to hike through soft sand to get to and it was it was it was something um and once we got up over the hill and came down onto this beach that was just deserted we found all these shells and agates and amazing things that we wouldn't find on like cannon beach and seaside or the common places we would go quite so plentifully and then we walked just a little ways down and we found something amazing an amazing sign to us of God's great love. An unusual sign though, I'm sure. We found a dead whale carcass, a dead gray whale, which I know does not sound like something that would bring lots of joy and lots of comfort to most people, but to my marine research aspiring daughter, finding this dead whale was like finding treasure. I mean, of course she was sad for the loss of this life, but to find this amazing scientific find just lit her up. It was the coolest thing she'd ever found on the beach and she just loved it. And it was such an awesome sign to us of God's love, of God's protection, of God's assurance that there is more to come, that even though her dream is deferred right now, it is not over that she will get to do these things. And that maybe because her dream is delayed, we'll have more moments to find crazy beaches that we've never gone before. You know, this pandemic has brought a lot of loss, but it has also brought other things, right? We've maybe had the time to try something we've never tried before or find a new place that we've never found before. And those are gifts. Those are assurances that God is with us, that he is holding on to us, that this is not the end of his goodness. While it may not be the end of the pandemic yet, it's not the end of his goodness and it never was. God's love didn't get the COVID. It didn't quarantine. And he has kept us together as a church and he has kept us going even during all this time. He has walked through this valley with us. He's come down the mountain to love us and to bring us joy. So let's celebrate that together today. And again, if you have ways that you have seen God's goodness, 
please send us a video please send us a photo please comment right now in the comments because we would love to celebrate and give praise for those moments with you and we would love to be encouraged by those things too May you have moments of great belly-shaking laughter this week. When your thoughts turn to mourning and anxiety, may God interrupt with his joy and his love. And may you be an extension of that and cause great belly-shaking laughs in the lives of your friends and your family this week. Amen.